So it's the end of a long work day and we decided we would make a video to explain some of the ins and outs of replacing motor cables on hub motors, a very common repair. And there's a couple of very simple tricks that are maybe not so intuitive. Uh, so for people who haven't done this before and want kind of a blue slate explanation, stay tuned. And for people who have, you still might learn something useful. So we've got a damaged cable. Obviously the damage almost always occurs too close to the case of the motor to do any joinery on the outside. You would never want to cut this and solder another motor cable here. Far better to open the motor, remove the cable, drag a new one through the bore, and do your joinery inside the motor. It's the only way to fix it properly. So you can see the damage on this cable is certainly not repairable in situ. This cable will have to come out. Getting the cable out is easy enough. Getting the new one in, well, that's where there's a couple of useful tricks that you might find very handy. So we're gonna flip this motor around and take a look at the other side. And you'll see why this GMAC motor is an excellent example of the worst case scenario when it comes to motor cable replacements. Uh, larger hub motors are pretty effortless and easy to do. The GMAC has a tricky combination of a very narrow axle bore, uh, a very wide motor cable, and a few very sharp 90 degree bends that that cable needs to make in order to get where it's going. Even once it gets where it's going, you have a real clearance problem over the top of the stator where all your joinery needs to be very flat and flush to the surface of the coils. So we will begin by removing the old motor cable uh, with a couple of strategic cuts. Now, oh, I'm gonna need a nicer set of cutters. I'm just cutting away the cordage that is holding this joinery down to the surface of the stator. And what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of each one of the three motor phase wires attached to the coils. Just so I don't have to make any detailed notes on the color combination, I've got a little bit of color left over to tell me all I need. Those were the three motor phase cables, the three large uh, power carrying uh, wires. And as you can see, I've just left a little bit of the old cable on the uh, motor coil just to simplify the process of taking notes and make sure I don't do something silly like join the yellow to the blue wire. Best avoided. We also need to remove our smaller wires. In this case, we have five wires for our Hall effect sensors, as well as a dedicated Hall effect sensor for our speedometer and another wire for our thermistor. Uh, so I'm going to make those cuts, again, leaving just a little bit of the original color behind uh, to simplify things during reassembly. So far, this is all quite intuitive. Most people who have tried this uh, will tell you that getting the old cable out is not a problem. And depending on how wide the cable is, getting a new one in, eh, well, may or may not be simple. So we've got things pretty much free here. So in theory, haha, <laughs> if we rotate this, and elevate it in our soft jaws a little bit. It's also worth noting uh, I'm using a clamp here on threads, which is never ideal. Uh, just for the purposes of stable filming, we're keeping it resting in the jaws and we're of course using aluminum soft jaws. Uh, so I'm gonna see how, oh, yeah, that's not going without a fight. So let's take it out of the vise so we don't damage the threads. This is gonna be off frame or can we just pan down a little bit? And uh, let's watch Peter fight and struggle with the cable in an effort to get it out. We gotta get this cable out of here. Is it still rolling? Yeah. Okay, this might end in tears. There we go. Okay, so that was in there pretty tight. And our replacement cable is gonna be the same width. Um, you can use narrower cables, but then you have a higher phase resistance and you can't run as much power through the motor. You're gonna have voltage drop across the motor coil, or across the phase wires, rather. So, uh, getting our new cable in is clearly going to be a job. We're going to use tape, uh, fish tape, essentially, to uh, fish through the bore of the axle and to pull that cable behind it. The only non-intuitive part, the one trick that I think might be useful to, to many of you is how we're going to prepare that cable before we pull it through. 
So obviously, you want the cable end to taper down to a point so that it's easier to feed through. And it's very intuitive to think that you should strip away the jacket and then take your fish tape, just any high adhesive tape, and wrap it around a cable prepared like this as it tapers down. The problem is then the tension is born on the inner, uh, the inner wires and the outer sheath of the cable comes under compression and bunches up in the bore and is very, very troublesome to pull through. I find it far more useful to prepare a cable like this. Um, I've got a cable that's longer than we're going to need. I can work out my length once we've succeeded pulling this through the bore. And what I want to end up with is a cable where the outer sheath extends beyond the inner conductors. Uh, in order to do that, I've exposed just a little bit of those inner conductors here. I'm going to take some pliers and get a good grip on them. And I'm going to massage the sheath of the cable down just hmm, about eight centimeters or so is generally plenty. And then cut it flush if I had a better cutter. These are certainly not cutters to the task, but we're going to see if this works. Oh, look at that success. So now as I kind of return the sheath to a bit of a neutral position, I've got about eight centimeters of sheath without any cable in it. And I'm then going to just slit a little bit along the length of that outer jacket. And what that's going to let me do is bring this cable down to a bit of a point. Now I can kind of roll this outer jacket up on itself like that, wrap this up in tape, and this is, I've found at least, the most effective way of pulling cable through very tight bores. So what we're using here um, is simply bicycle rim tape. Uh, there's plenty of tapes that will work. The two attributes you're looking for are very high tensile strength. You don't want a tape that deforms elastically as you pull on it, and you want low friction on the non-sticky side. You want something that's going to be nice and slippery as it runs through the bore. And uh, just so happens that this tape works very well. Uh, but duct tape, for example, just doesn't quite have the tensile rigidity to do a great job. I find this much better. And we are going to, again, kind of make a little roll of that outer sheath. I'm going to start rolling my tape well, down right near where my conductors uh, terminate, because I want to avoid making this cable any thicker anywhere, because it's going to be tight enough. Uh, but I also need enough sheath so that the tape keeps a, you know, the adhesive isn't strong enough to, to pull on through. So I'm going to wrap it up at roughly just steeper than about a 45 degree angle I find works pretty well. Again, I'm being careful not to kink the tape because um, the objective here is not just to get a very strong bond to the cable, uh, but also to avoid making a wider cable than the nominal width at any point. Otherwise, we're going to make a hard job even harder. And then we're going to need extra length in this, obviously, to pull through as an effective piece of fish tape. So to that end, I just kind of roll the tape back on itself and give myself a little bit of a little string of tape, I suppose, to work with. And uh, so I think that's probably just about long enough. I've got about 20 centimeters of uh, length of tape in total. And uh, we're going to try fishing this through the bore. And then the fun part where we try and pull the cable behind it. Here's actually a good example of something we need to correct before the pulling operation. So you can see how uh, the part of the tape that I've formed the string out of is obviously not concentric with the cable. Uh, that simply won't do, and we might have to redo this. But let's see if we can just correct it here. Definitely the most critical part of the wrap is that point where the inner sheath ends, and you just go from an inner sheath to a straight run of fish tape. And, uh, well, it's far from my best work, but we're going to see how that does. So, obviously, we're going to be feeding our tape in through the axle bore here, and we're going to be looking to pull it out through the little escape bore right there, which will probably require some needle nose pliers that I don't have on hand, so we might have to run and grab those. But let's find out. Going through all this trouble, I can certainly understand why people would be tempted to take the shortcut and splice their cable at the axle outside the motor hub, um, but it's exposed to the elements. It is not a professional solution. I generally want to take the time to do this right, and uh, 10 second time out while I find some needle nose pliers. Oh, whoa, look at this. This is the beauty of working in Grin. 
you're never more than two feet away from the tool you need. All right, continuing along, we're going to go fishing for this fish tape. We might need some finer pliers or a hooked tool. Um, so again, I can't emphasize enough that most motors are much easier than this. The GMAC is an excellent motor, but uh, this cable is a bit of a zigzag. There we go. I think we've got it. I'm going to try and massage it through. There we go. So now we've got the tape. And get rid of our forceps here. So now very carefully just pulling the tape through. And we now reach a point where the meat of the cable is entering the bore. And this is where the going gets a little tougher. Um, all right. So we've now reached a point where I've got the thickness of the outer sheath of the cable and a little bit of leftover tape entering the bore. And I've got rim tape sticking out here. Now it comes to just raw physical strength and uh, hoping that your tape is tight enough. So uh, this will be a little bit ungraceful, but basically what it comes down to is just a little bit of strength and hopefully some strong tape. So you can see it heading in. So this is the point where had we grabbed onto just the conductors, this sheath would be bunching up and compressing and would make it essentially impossible to get a cable this thick through the bore. But by grabbing on again to that sheath, uh, we're able to pull it through and maybe just maybe we get all the way. All right, it also doesn't hurt to uh, work it in compression from the outside. Push it in as much as you're able. And right when it doesn't feel like it's moving, go back to pulling on the tape and kind of inchworm your way along. I think we'll throw this in the vise. Again, I'm not grabbing the threads here, just grabbing the uh, solid shank of the axle. If you find it getting to a point where it absolutely will not move, don't consider it a defeat to back the cable out and reapply the tape. That's certainly been necessary for me. Um, but let's continue and see if we can get this. Oh, oh yeah. And there we go. So we've got the jacket through just in time. Just as our tape gave up, we got the jacket through. Uh, but generally, once you've got the jacket, you've got enough to work the rest of it through. In theory. <laughs> it's kind of like it's the closest we males can come to, to giving birth, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Is it going to be enough? Down to the wire. Tempted to get vice grips, maybe. All right, so we've got it most of the way through. I lost the jacket of the cable right at the end as I was pulling on it. The tape pulled away and then the jacket pulled away. Um, but I've got more than enough to work with to pull it the rest of the way through, uh, just to make sure that the length outside our motor is appropriate. So let's see. Actually, we might just leave it here for the purposes of alacrity. Er yeah, actually, this is a perfect example of what happens when you pull on the conductor. So you can see at this point, now that I've lost the outer jacket, as I pull on this inner conductor, the outer jacket outside the motor is just bunching up in compression. And almost certainly, we won't be able to get it much farther than it already is. So this can be a problem if you need a very, very precise length of cable running the uh, outside the motor case. Uh, but we're very close. I mean nominal to what we had before. I think we're, I think we're perhaps six or seven centimeters longer. And uh, I think we are going to do our joinery and roll with a little bit of extra slack. We don't want to strip away the original motor cable. 
we want to desolder the cable from the motor winding itself. Um, important for two reasons. One, so you don't wind up with two joins where only one is required. And two, in some cases, especially a motor like this GMAC, space is at a premium. You got very little extra volume, very little headroom between this stator and where the uh, case has to ride over top. And if we have the original soldered join and then a second soldered join, that little bit of extra volume can often sink us. Uh, so we're gonna head over to the bench, desolder these little stubs of motor cable I've left intact. The hard part is over. We've managed to pull our cable through the bore of the axle. And uh, what's left for us is fairly remedial work. Uh, we won't bore you with it all on camera, but if you take a look, you can see how I've trimmed the three motor phase wires to different lengths. I've actually already completed the joinery on this yellow phase wire here. You can see much as the original cable joined. You can see the remnants of my original cable uh, still attached to the coils here. I'm going to desolder this, solder in my green and blue phase wires, and then finish th things up by running these smaller wires for my hall and thermistor and speed hall around there, making sure everything is well insulated with heat shrink, and most importantly, tethered either with uh, cordage or zip ties if you must uh, down to the aluminum frame of the stator to make sure that even as the bike goes bumping along the road uh, we're not going to risk having the case of the motor that's again rotating very close to these cables here uh, we're not going to risk have anything bounce loose and get caught in that plate uh, so once this soldering is complete and these wires are all nice and firmly attached to the body of the stator we can reassemble the motor and it'll be ready for the road